we've talked in humorous terms about the January 6th committee. However, I do want to give them credit for one area which we have covered consistently since the very days that we were on Rising, yeah. which is that whether you believe the election was stolen or not, uh, the idea has been that the administration, the Trump administration and the Trump campaign were raising millions of dollars, $250 million, to fight election lawsuits. They were begging their campaign donors in order to fund them so that they could fight it. And many people, rightfully, mostly boomers, believed that the election was stolen. Well, Trump took their money, and he didn't spend any of it on actually contesting election results. And now, actually, they have uncovered what some of that money actually went to. So let's put this on the screen. Uh, number one is a million-dollar donation to the Conservative Partnership Institute specifically for a sinecure for Mark Meadows, mm -hmm. who was the chief of staff, a mm -hmm. million dollars to the America First Policy Institute, which is where Larry Kudlow and a bunch of other people who worked in the administration are now having their cushy little jobs. Rick Perry and them are on the board. Oh $200,000 to the Trump Hotel and Collection, mm -hmm. and then $5 million to a single organizer to Event Strategies, Inc., Hmm, that's really interesting. But uh, how they lay it out in their presentation, actually, look, I'm not saying this is ever going to change any minds, but I think it should be noted of just how much of the Trump campaign and so much more was a complete grift, not just for Trump himself, but really for MAGA Incorporated. So let's take a listen to how they laid that out yesterday. But as the select committee has demonstrated, the Trump campaign knew these claims of voter fraud were false, yet they continued to barrage small dollar donors with emails, encouraging them to donate to something called the Official Election Defense Fund. The select committee discovered no such fund existed. The claims that the election was stolen were so successful, President Trump and his allies raised $250 million, nearly $100 million in the first week after the election. Wow. So, you know, that just a hundred million dollars. And uh, I just think that the more level-headed amongst and around him, I really just don't know what they were thinking at that time. Bill Barr continues to kind of be a gem uh, on this one. It's, it's kind of hilarious because he was asked about some of the Dominion voting conspiracies and about the new 2000 Mules documentary by Dinesh D'Souza. And his, his reaction really is priceless. Let's take a listen to that. My opinion then and my opinion now is that uh, the election was not stolen by fraud. And uh, I haven't seen anything since the election that changes my mind on that, including the 2000 Mules movie. <laughs> oh, when the movie came out, uh, you know, I think the photographic evidence in it was completely I mean, it was there was a little bit of it, but it was lacking. You know, it didn't it didn't establish widespread uh, illegal um, harvesting. The other thing is people don't understand is that uh, it's not clear that even if you can show harvesting, that that changes the the results of the election. You're not the courts are not going to throw out votes. So, lo and behold, Bill Barr, not terribly impressed with 2,000 mules. <laughs> and the, you know, camera footage of people, like, putting ballots in the mailbox, something right. they are legally allowed to do under certain circumstances. But I mean, cell phone data, Crystal, cell oh, phone. The cell phone oh. I mean, this is, is so silly. And he's right about, he says they, like, say it very conclusively, like, oh, if you went by these drop boxes multiple times, then you must be a mm -hmm. mule. It's like, well, if you're talking about a city and people are just, you know, it's an Uber driver going about their route or going about their day, of course you're going to have people who drive by these ballot boxes, which were put intentionally in, like, you know, highly trafficked public location. Anyway, it was silly, stupid, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, the grift part, this has always bothered me. It, I know it bothers you, too. Oh, because immensely, yeah. you have a lot of people who really believe in this man. And obviously, at this point, I find that hard to really understand. But— you know, they trust him. And so when he's sending these missives, sometimes 25 emails a day, yeah. which, by the way, whatever candidate you like or don't like, unsubscribe from all of these campaign email funders. If you want to donate to a candidate, do it. You don't need them harassing you and mm -hmm. haranguing you day in and day out and feeding you, like, total nonsense because he's by far not the only one who engages in this type of scummy behavior. We saw it with him and with others like Ted Cruz in the lead-up to the Georgia Senate elections where they were saying, the Senate 
Senate majority's on the line. We've got to stop the Democrats. It's existential. We've got to be all in. Donate now. And then they weren't even sending the money to the candidates that you thought that you were And supporting. they have no legal obligation to do so. And that's, that's, the that's a part, part of it. You know, Zoe uh, Lofgren, who's the Democrat who is running this part of the hearing, she was on with Jake Tapper and she got asked, like, is this a crime? Did they commit a crime? And she, even she wouldn't say that this is yeah, illegal. Not. She's like, I don't know that it's a crime. It's just, a, it's definitely a grift. Mm -hmm. And that's what's so, you know, gross about our campaign finance laws is that you can literally send out an email, which is what, the Trump, Trump campaign was doing over and over, 25 times a day, saying, donate to our election integrity fund, help us file these lawsuits and fight this fraud. And then there isn't even such a fund. Yeah. Like, it does not exist. They have no obligation whatsoever to do anything appropriate with your money. They can send it to, you know, $5 million to this, some company led by their brother's friend or whatever. And that's what they did. I mean, they're also looking at, this is the other thing that got a lot of attention, Kimberly Guilfoyle at the January 6th rally got paid $60,000 for a two-minute speech introducing her fiance. Wow, that's great work. You know, it's great work if you can get it. Who amongst us has never been paid the average American uh, wage uh, for, an for an entire year, year for, for two, two and a half minutes of work in order to give a speech and introduce your, introduce your own fiance? Mm, interesting. This is, that's, look, it's the part that will always bug me the most. The people around him and watching just like this coterie of just disgusting grifters making millions of dollars off of well-meaning people. And look, you know, you can hate them if you want, but there are citizens too. That doesn't mean that they deserve to get ripped off. I remember the Rush Limbaugh uh there was a Rush Limbaugh clip that was going around at the time of the election. There was a guy, he was literally in tears. He was like, I don't understand. He's like, how can they just steal the election from Trump? They're like, we need to do something. And it's like, well, that's how January 6th happened. And again, you know, these people really trust him. They really trusted Rush. They really trusted a lot of people in conservative media who were very willing to go along with this because they didn't want to sidestep Trump. And now you have millions of people who think that the election was stolen. And it was, listen, Yes, it was pernicious when Hillary and them were floating Russiagate conspiracies in 2017. It's also pernicious now. Like, you don't have to draw a false equivalence and say that's completely fine. We have a longstanding implications of this, both in our politics for a long time to come. But yeah, good people, well-meaning people, they believed in Trump. And they gave him $250 million, and he didn't spend any of it actually. And these were not the high-level, wealthy Yeah, donors. these are like normal people. These are, yeah. you know, regular people kicking in what they can because they feel like their democracy is being stolen, their vote didn't right. count, and all this nonsense, total bullshit that they were being fed. I mean, I think as you're watching these January 6th hearings, if you are watching them, <laughs> I have a feeling our audience right, is yeah. not really That's watching right. them, but I'm sure right, you, we can, watch them you, for you. No you can't avoid yeah. seeing some of you know the coverage and the clips that are floating around. I think it's really important to remember. the. I'm sure you had some people who were rioting at the Capitol that day, who were just like chaos agents, who, you know, they didn't really care whether the claims were true or false. They like trouble. They like the action. They see themselves as these, you know, tough, whatever. Mm -hmm. Chaos agents, okay? There's some of that. You had a lot of people who really actually believed they were doing the correct patriotic thing by like backing up Trump and going into the Capitol. None of the violence is justified whatsoever, even if you, you know, really believed that. But I do think that's important, like, that's important context is that a lot of these people really bought this nonsense. They gave him money. He said, show up at the cap, show up on January 6th. It's going to be wild. They did it. He said, walk to the Capitol. They did it. I mean, they really convinced themselves that this was actually the moral and just mm -hmm. thing to do. And so the deeper question for all of us is how do you get as a country to that place? where there are so many people who can be persuaded that it's not just okay, but it's actually like noble and patriotic to storm the Capitol in this way. It's deeply sad. 60 yeah. grand to kill, and, but they don't care. I mean, at the end of the day, they don't care. They can rightfully point to Hunter and be like, well, look at him too. Yeah, listen, that's the problem. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. 
That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.